I just want you to know that you're not alone. I feel your pain. I have cried. I have been angry. I am still very angry. I'm not going to lose hope. Everybody knows that Funshore is pro-Nigeria. I've always been passionate about Nigeria. I've always been a nation builder. I've considered myself to be one of those that feel like I would rather prosper here in Nigeria than go abroad. Even though I'm beginning to tilt towards the go to Canada kind of stuff. But I still love my country. I will still fight for my country. I will still learn my voice. Let's not stop. Let's not get tired. See, Nigerians we have to know, particularly the youth, we have to know that one protest cannot solve 60 years of decadence. So we have to come ready. This is not a battle. This is a war. And we have to fight it and we have to win it. We will win it by the grace of God. Hiya. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Funsha Waters. If you don't know me, I am a Nigerian YouTuber. I, I talk about my adult struggles and also give lifestyle content and lots more basically. This is just a life update. So if you don't know, here in Nigeria, we've been going through a whole lot within the last few weeks. So two weeks ago, the youth of Nigeria came out with this hashtag NSARS. If you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, if you are on YouTube, I believe anywhere in the world you would have seen what I am talking about. Generally in Nigeria here, the police wield so much power. They carry guns around and the sight of police is the beginning of fear. When you sight them, there's a fear that grips your heart because you don't know what they are going to do to you. It could go south they could shoot you and nothing would happen there's no hope for justice if any of those things happen so most times i've been told if the police stops you don't argue with them don't try to tell them you know the law especially for me that i'm a lawyer it's it's somewhere when they say don't try to show them that you know law or you know your rights so basically just answer their question play dumb be humble if they abuse you don't say anything because they could shut you up for life and so that's our reality basically every day and that's for the nigerian police generally but there's this unit of the police the nigerian police force that is more like a terrorist that is more like an armed robber that has been really 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 maltreating us harassing us killing us and when i say us i'm talking about nigerian youth so this particular unit is a special anti-robbery squad which it was created by the nigerian police to apprehend armed robbers basically that's their job they're supposed to protect us from them but guess what these guys instead of protecting us against armed robbery or armed robbers they are the ones actually putting their lives in danger nigerian youth would rather be robbed by real armed robbers than encountering a sars officer so we were like we're tired of this we want we want justice we want end to police brutality and that's what we have been fighting for for the past two weeks until the hoodlums hijacked our protest and the government or the governor of lagos state in nigeria decided to impose a curfew on everyone <laughs> the amount of content i have consumed the amount of gory content that i have consumed in the last two weeks is way more than i've ever consumed in my entire life I was saying to my Instagram fam, family some days back that if you know me well, you know that I don't like blood. I don't like action movies. I don't like horror movies. Even Nigerian movies like African Magic Yoruba, where they show witches and wizards, I can't stand it. Growing up, I used to run behind my daddy's back 
to hide when they show all of those terrible scary things even as a lawyer i remember having to represent a a client in a murder case and my boss clearly forcing me to look at the gory pictures because if you're going to represent this person in court you had better be mentally ready for it because it's going to be showed in court and you don't want the court to feel like you're not prepared for it or to make your client look guilty since you self as the lawyer representing cannot look at pictures you cannot look at the dead body you cannot look at the cuttings you cannot look at the blood so this is me who does not like all of those bloody things looking at twitter every freaking day every freaking minute seeing people being killed knowing that it could have been me knowing it could have been anybody knowing it could have been someone i know knowing that these are real lives being killed i saw a lot of videos that i can't take away from my mind i saw a lot of pictures that i can't take away from my mind these things i told myself i needed to watch them it could have been me it could have been someone i know so you for sure you need to watch these things and see what they are doing to you see what they are doing to your friends see what they are doing to your fellow youth talk now or remain silent forever so there was this hashtag soros okay talk speak be vocal talk about it on your social media use your social media platform and everything so the Lagos state government declared a curfew that particular day the governor practically gave us four hours notice to go to our different homes if you know lagos you know lagos is like new york city worse than new york city in terms of traffic so you know that four hours is not enough for people to actually people that have gone out to actually get back home so it was crazy nobody was going to get home within that short period of time anyway the youths at lekki that were already protesting said there's nothing they are going to do they're going to sit down here and protest peacefully they're going to sit down sing the national anthem and wave the flag because someone had told us that if you wave the flag the military men will not shoot at you because it will be regarded as, as treason i didn't believe that honestly even when i saw it because i knew that the nigerian police force plus the military officers the enforcement agencies in nigeria don't know what is what they do whatever they want to do and nobody cares they kill you and that's it like there's no hope for justice and that's why we need to keep fighting right that's why we are fighting that's why we are saying no we need to hold these people accountable the looted shops hoodlums took over the over lagos city and so many other cities in nigeria and they were burning malls they were killing people they were destroying properties people's had end investment it became a class war the rich against the poor the funny thing is the people they were actually gunning at were not the rich people right because obviously you will never have access to the rich people the rich rich people you will never get an access to them to be able to destroy their properties so the people they were actually focusing on or the people they were actually attacking are middle class people people who suffer to gather things together to make ends meet and these were people that their businesses were being destroyed see i'm not in a good space of mind i am tired Basically, because this year is just a lot. This year is like five in one. This year is so long. This year is unending. This year is, ha. Huh. This is my year, oh. <laughs> Saying this is my year, my friends and family understand it. When I was, I said when I was in hundred level, that was. Say 2000 and as a 2009, I was looking forward to 2020. 2020 was my year of balance well. 2020 was my year of... <sighs> I finally got in there. You know when you're climbing a stairs and you get to the topmost floor and you're like... <sighs> I've gotten to my destination. 2020 was that supposed to be that year for me. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't know anymore. I'm just hopeful for November because October was filled with blood, and I pray that we get justice. I really pray we get justice. I mean, if you don't know, understand what we are going through here in Nigeria, I beg you, please read about it. It's just for you to just put hashtag answers or you just Google it. You get informed understand why we were begging you to post about it understand where we were so passionate about people with great followings on instagram on everywhere platform celebrities begging people to actually go for it more like a distress call help us help us talk about it help us talk about it it wasn't because we wanted to call anybody out or anything like that it was just basically if you are here you will feel the heat you won't believe that yes the coffee was has ended now but you won't believe that for me to go down to my streets to go buy something i was scared how do i get through this year from one death to the other from losing my not losing my job intentionally losing my job <laughs> so not being able to do what i really want why i actually really resigned my job to being broke to being at home, to, to the lockdown, to the apprehension that you could have the virus, to staying at home for so long that you don't know what to do again with your life, to being scared of going out, to police brutality. 2020, I need a break. I freaking need a break. Give me a break. Honestly, that's why I have not posted. That's why I've not been in the headspace to laugh. Everything was just annoying to me. Two days after, on Instagram now, after the old Lekki massacre, people were making skits, people were laughing, people were making memes, and I was angry. Angry because I said, why are you people laughing? Why? What is funny? People just died. What is funny? Why are we laughing? What is, what is there to be happy about? But again, I know now that we just have to, life has to go on, sadly. We just have to find joy. People have different way of coping. For us here in Nigeria, we are the happiest people on earth. And regardless of what we are going through, we will always find reasons to laugh. So um, wherever you are in the world, as Nigerians in diaspora, don't be discouraged. I'm trying my best to keep my hopes high. I the only coping mechanism I have is to drown myself in worship, drown myself in prophecies that have been made about Nigeria, and just that gives me hope to know that God has what God has said concerning us that yes, this would happen, this point of difficulty will happen, this birth pangs would happen these contractions will happen we would have to cry but at the end of the day we know that when the child is born the pain is usually worth it i just want a situation where it wouldn't be my grandchildren that would say mama fought for us and that's why we have a good life i also want to fight for them but i also want to be alive to enjoy the new nigeria we all are clamoring for please take time to yourself take a break if you have to self-care routine is important um try to do something that would make you happy watch movies go eat something indulge yourself if you can um, I'm going to try to be creating content from now and forth. Um, this content will go, will go out on Wednesday as usual. We'll find, maybe expect another one on Sunday. Hopefully, I am in that headspace as much as I want to. I love you guys. See you in my next one. Bye. Mwah.